Well guys, we are back again and I have another update for you concerning my wife, Sarah. So stick around because the Vocek experience starts right now. Welcome back to another video of the Vocek Experience, where idiots are still always us. Always me. Even in these trying times, I'm still an idiot. Because we gotta be. We gotta try to keep our spirits up, especially, you know, when we got loved ones that are in the hospital and in the CICU. So yes, I have another update for you concerning Sarah. Um, we were just out there visiting her a few days ago. Uh, and uh, surprisingly enough, uh, when we got there to see her, uh, she was uh, sitting up in a chair and everything. Um, but uh, she wasn't going to be sitting in the chair very long because then they put her back into bed because she was getting a little uncomfortable sitting in the chair. But I will say, though, she was a little bit more lively, a little bit more, you know, alert and talking. Although she's still talking with a whisper, but her, you know, whisper is getting a little louder and it's getting more easier to understand her when she talks. So that's a good thing. That means that her vocal cords and her throat is healing, uh, even though it's healing slow, but it's still healing. And, uh, and I even talked to, uh, the doctor today. Uh, I asked her about, um, you know, her voice and if it's still improving. And she said that it is. Uh, it's not as inflamed as it was uh, a couple of weeks ago when they first took her off the the vent. So, so that is really, really good. But she still can't uh, eat or drink anything solid or liquid. Uh, so she's still getting all her nutrients through the tube that is up her nose. Which every, every time I see that thing, it makes my nose itch and it just makes my nose feel uncomfortable. And I can just imagine what that feels like for her, you know. I'm pretty sure she's not comfortable with that either. But, you know, um, but she's got to eat somehow. So, yeah, she talked to us for quite a while while we were there. And uh, she joked around a little bit. Um, she laughed a little bit when we joked around with her and everything. And... Um, and then she also got her uh, got herself swabbed. The geneticist came and swabbed her to get her DNA, and uh, and she also swabbed uh, her dad uh, to get his DNA so that they can run some more tests because uh, they're going to be doing uh, some more genetic testing on her to see if whatever is going on could actually be something genetic. So. Uh, so we'll see about that. Um, she said it's going to take between a week and a half to two weeks to get the results back from that. So, yeah, I'm just anticipating and just can't wait to see if they actually find something about what's going on and what could be causing all these issues with Sarah. Another thing that they did while we were down there visiting her the other day was they came in and they took a biopsy of her pick scar. Well, at least one of her pick scars. Because, you know, when she gets really nervous and, you know, and anxious and stuff, she just, she starts to pick and, you know, stuff like that. And so she's got, you know, scars from her picking throughout the years. And so uh, they wanted to take a biopsy of one of the scars from that to see if maybe, you know, maybe something happened uh, with one of those scars to try, you know, that might have 
you know, got her into, the, you know, this place in the first place. Um, but so far, uh, since I talked to the doctor today, those results are still not back. Um, she said that that, that can also take a while too for that biopsy. So it's just a waiting game right now to see, you know, which one comes back first, the DNA or the biopsy, you know, and, uh, and of course they're going to go from there determining, you know, what's going on once they see if there's anything in there that they can work with to try to figure out what exactly is going on with Sarah. Now, with all that being said, um, earlier this morning, I got a phone call from one of the counselors that's also working on Sarah's case. Uh, who has uh, told me uh, earlier uh, today when they called that um, there is a possibility that Sarah could need a heart transplant. Um, so uh, she didn't give me too, too much information about that because she's just a counselor and not, you know, a medical doctor. Uh, but she did tell me that I should uh, maybe start doing some fundraising and stuff like that to kind of, you know, get some money and some resources together because if she does end up needing uh, a heart transplant, uh, she's going to need a lot of care. Even when she does come home, she's going to need a lot of care. And, uh, and of course they asked us if, uh, you know, if there's going to be somebody available, you know, to help her and to work with her when she does come home uh, and everything. And of course there is, you know, there's me and there's my mother and we work opposite shifts. So someone's always going to be home to, to help her, you know, with anything that she may need. Uh, but like I said, she didn't give me too, too much information. Uh, she did tell me she was going to email me at some point and some information regarding two heart transplants and different things like that. So far, I haven't gotten anything yet, but you know, that could come at any time. Now, because the counselors told me this and couldn't give me much information, um, I ended up calling uh, one of her own doctors that is actually working on her case and, and everything. And uh, I talked to her and she said that yes, uh, in the last few days, they have been giving her a workup to see if she would qualify for a heart transplant if it comes to that point. Uh, that includes doing a bunch of blood tests and some, you know, I'm not sure exactly all the tests, but she did say they're doing a full workup on her to see if she would qualify. And, uh, and if she does qualify for a heart transplant and it comes down to it, they're, they're going to discuss it with me and everything. And then, you know, if everything goes good and, everything you know if she qualifies for everything and all the conditions are met they're going to you know talk to me about getting her on the heart transplant list now we still don't know for sure if this is what's going to happen uh it still could be you know fixing just going in and fixing the the valves it's it could be something else simple or something like that but uh but they are uh, at least uh, working her up for a possible heart transplant sometime in the near future. So I'm going to have to keep you guys updated on that. Uh, and of course, once I hear anything about that, you know, moving forward, you guys will also know about what's going on with that. Because I know you guys are all wondering how she's doing and all that stuff. And, and I know you guys appreciate the updates that I've been doing and everything over the channel and, and everything. And of course, I'm still going to be doing that for you so that, you know, you guys are always in the loop and you always know exactly what's going on. Now, the counselor that I talked to earlier had also told me because uh, if she does end up having to have a heart transplant, the, the drugs that she's going to need after that transplant is like astronomical, which I already kind of knew that, but she reaffirmed that yes, you know, heart transplant drugs are very expensive. And, uh, and of course, doing the care and everything for a heart transplant person you know, it can get expensive and it can take its toll. 
So, but, uh, but I am also in the works of filling out paperwork to see if I can get her on Medicaid to help out uh, you know, with the medical bills and all that stuff. Cause I know my insurance that I have through work isn't going to cover everything. So we're working on hopefully getting something, you know, that can help with the cost of all this. But she also told me that it might be a good idea to start fundraising to get, you know, funds together and, you know, for expenses and travel time and all that stuff together which I think is a good idea uh, to be honest with you um, I haven't actually thought about doing that until I was on the phone with her today so I'm gonna be looking into seeing what I can do about possible fundraising and everything for Sarah and for pretty much this whole situation you know, so that we make sure that we're there for her when we need to be and that we're able to go out and visit her, you know, and we have, you know, the finances and the means if we need it to, you know, help her financially, you know, all, you know, all that stuff. So, but she still has a long road ahead of her. Uh, the doctor told me that uh, today uh, she's pretty much the same as she was when we saw her a couple of days ago which is sitting up in the chair, uh, talking, you know, and stuff a little bit. Uh, but she's still a little confused about a few things and she's still pretty weak, which the doctor told me can be a side effect of all the, the meds and the drugs they have her on right now. Uh, but then she told me not to really worry about that right now. Um, but just know that that is, you know, part of what's going on is short-term memory loss, uh, being confused about stuff. Uh, she did say she's having a hard time reading things. Um, but, uh, so there's that getting her mental, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. Mental, the mental juices, we'll just call it flowing so that, you know, that her mind can get better from this, you know, because I'm, I know she's under a lot of stress. Her body's under a lot of stress. And being on all those drugs, I know that can't be helpful. You know, especially when it comes to memory things. And, uh, and of course, uh, every so often physical therapy does come in to help her keep her muscles moving. You know, her arms, her legs and stuff. But she is still pretty weak. Uh, she still can't really get on her phone to text us or anything. And, uh, and like I said in my last video, I think it was my last video anyway, that, you know, it, it really sucks being two hours away, not being able to see her as much as I want to. And I can't even really communicate with her all that much uh, unless I am there. So, you know, but you just got to take things one day at a time. And now with this added thing of possible heart transplant, trust me, I am scared. I am anxious. I'm I'm feeling a whole bunch of things right now uh, concerning this thing. Um, in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking that maybe at some point she might need a heart transplant. But I was but before every doctor I told to was like, no, it's you know I don't think that's going to happen. I don't really don't think it's going to happen. And now it may actually happen. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned, you know like I said, scared, nervous, uh, all kinds of emotions, you know, because I know that that's going to be, you know, a hard thing, you know, um, especially for her. And, uh, you know, of course we're all up to the task to take care of her and all that good stuff. So, uh, so she has nothing to worry about whenever she does finally get to come home. Um, but as of right now, it's still not going to be anytime soon for her to come home. It's still going to be quite a while. And like I said, she still has a long road ahead of her. And, uh, and so we all just got to keep praying and keep, you know, keep our thoughts and, you know, just try to keep sending her some positive energy so that she can beat this condition and everything and uh, get back, you know, home to us and eventually get back to the Sarah we all know, you know, with her yelling at us, being sarcastic with us, and, you know, all the stuff that makes Sarah, Sarah, you know. But, uh, but anyway, that's the update. I just wanted to hurry up, get on here real quick, and uh, stay
stupid bug and give you guys the update on what's going on. Uh, and of course, I'll keep you updated as much as I can with, you know, information I get, you know, in the coming days, weeks, and possible months. So, uh, but anyway, um, as always, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of future updates and any future video that I put out. And of course, uh, if you want to support this dumb little channel of mine, you know, hit that join button, become a member of the Idiot Squad because we'd love to have you. And, uh, and of course, you can follow me on all the major social medias, you know, like uh, Instagram, Twitter. Well, I guess it's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X. So yeah, I'm on that. And, uh, and of course, the new social media uh, platform, Threads, I'm on that as well. Um, I, I need to really put the, that new link to Threads down in the in my link tree, but I'll, I'll do that, you know, as soon as I can. And of course, the merch store, uh, check that out. There might be something in there you might like. So, you know, give that a look and check out the audio podcast, Idiots Are Us, The Story of Me, which is available on all the major podcasting platforms. Uh, so, so yeah, like I said, that's the, the most recent update. And, uh, and as always, I will make sure that you guys keep getting more updates so that you know exactly what's going on out there. But, uh, but until then, I hope you're all having a good day, good night, good week, good weekend, whatever the case is when you're watching. And I will see you all in the next video. So with that, bye for now.